Hi everyone, I'm Mara Webster with SAG After Foundation and we are here today for another one of our conversations at home. Um, as a quick reminder again, we do have a link to our COVID-19 fund which is supporting SAG After members who are currently out of work due to closed down productions in the description to this video, so please check out that link below. Um, I'm really excited today to be joined by Deborah Messing, uh, who has been playing Grace for an astonishing 22 years um, across Will and Grace and it's finally in its, its last season and we're catching up on the last few episodes and it's been, it's been such a thrill watching it these last few episodes and I feel like every single episode it's just getting better and better and really continuing to develop your characters and and I wanted to kind of ask about that unparalleled experience in, in playing a character for that length of time and and the ability to know it so well because very few actors get that opportunity yeah it's um, it, it it has been extraordinary uh, even just hearing you say 22 years just sort of blew my mind because I, <laughs> I've been saying 20 years, but yes, we, we are now at 22. Um, you know, uh, when we ended after eight years, it was really, um, it was a real mourning. Uh, it, was, it was heartbreaking. We had gone through so much in that amount of time, and we really believed that it was over. Um, so when we had the opportunity to come back to do that political video, that just felt like, you know, we were getting away with something. And then of course, when we got the call saying, how do you feel about a reboot? Um, you know, it was all bets were off because it was only supposed to be 10 episodes. We only agreed to 10 and we ended up doing 54. Um, so you know, it, it seems like this time it feels very different ending, even though this is the final ending, this is it. This is it. Um, it doesn't have that kind of heartbreak. I think because there is such a feeling of gratitude uh, of being able to re-meet these characters in middle age, and to have the opportunity to explore what those characters would be like 12 years later. And, um, and that has been really fulfilling uh, and something that in television, no one ever really gets the opportunity to do. So um, there is a sense of, of completion, I think. And, uh, you know, the last two episodes are particularly special and I'm really proud of them and excited for people to see them because I think that, you know, the, the send off last time was controversial because we, we jumped 25 years and Will and Grace hadn't been talking and um, this time it's in real time and I think it's just right. I think that the fans will, will feel very, um, very happy that all four of these characters are are sent off in a way that is full of no pun intended grace and and respect yeah and fortunately you you were able to finish shooting the whole series before we went into the current situation that we're in and and i was interested if there was a different atmosphere on set the, that final day when you were filming this time versus the first time when you when you wrapped the show uh, yes, yes, a very different feeling. Um, you know, the, the first time it felt, it felt scary uh, because we had spent nearly a decade together and, and we really depended on one another. And I think our um, professional identities were very intertwined with each other at the time. And I think the idea of separating felt very scary. It felt like, well, what's next? What's going to happen? You know, am I going to have opportunities? How are people going to see me coming out of eight years of playing Grace or Jack? Or, And I think now, um, because each one of us has gone off and done a wide range of things professionally in that 12 inch, that 12 year time, um, I did three TV shows and movies and now a Broadway show. And, 
you know, Megan was touring with a band around the country and Sean became this mega executive producer producing TV shows and Eric did another two shows. And um, I think now we all are very uh, confident in our place in the industry and, um, and are confident and, and uh, appreciate the fact that we really are autonomous individual um, artists and that saying goodbye to this, there will be a sense of closure and, um, and pride mm -hmm. and joy saying goodbye this time. Um, but, you know, it's still, you know, e e having said that, when uh, the last word of the last scene happened, there was this pregnant pause in front of this live audience, and all you heard was Jim Burroughs, the iconic Jim Burroughs director, say, I hate to say it, cut. And that even just like repeating it, it gave us all chills and that made us emotional because, because Jimmy has been the captain of the ship and has been, you know, I called him Papa Jimmy, um, you know, and uh, so yeah, saying, saying goodbye to people you love. Um, I think it's, it's, it's one of the hardships of being an artist. You know, we, we, signed on for this we signed on for just being gypsies and going from cast to cast to cast and um as exciting th as that is to always know that you're going to meet new people and have completely new experiences with people um it still is painful because you know that no matter what you will never have that kind of intimacy of spending 12 hours a day with someone. Yeah, absolutely. Because you were touching upon that idea of, of your confidence growing as, as a performer through the show and the things that you did in between, I know that you've talked in the past about how early on in your career, it didn't feel like your opinions were valid in the room and particularly when it came to comedic beats and comedic moments for characters that you were playing, but David and Max really allowed you that freedom in this character. You know, I know that you had a big voice in Grace's Feminism and the Revival, but even early on and I was, I was interested in kind of when and how that shift came and the way that that has influenced the way that you walk into other sets now and can have more of a voice overall in your career. Uh, yeah, I am, I am so grateful to Max and Dave and Jimmy. Um, you know, my first experience, uh, Ned and Stacy, that I had never been on a set of any kind at that point. Um, I was fresh out of theater school and when we did our first take, you know, they came up to me and they were like, you're screaming. And I was like, well, I have to reach the back of all those people. And they're like, no, 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 no. There, there's literally a microphone right over your head. I mean, I was that green. And, um, and because I was green and because I was coming out of NYU, you know, all the acting schools, which is amazing, is they make us all feel like we can do anything. Um, and so I came into that feeling like, oh, this is just another play. Um, there's just cameras. And so we're going to talk camera, I mean, um, character and arcs and beats. And, um, and that was not welcomed on that show at all from me. Um, and that was very hard and shocking. And, um, you know, I felt that it was even as a woman, I, my voice was even less valuable on that set. Um, and so by the end of it, I actually told my agents, I'm not built for television. I'm coming home and I'm just going to do theater for the rest of my life because this hurts too much. And, um, and luckily when I was, asked to do Will and Grace. I had just finished doing Prey, this uh, mid-season drama, and I was exhausted. And I told my agents, don't call me for three months. I'm exhausted. And they said, we have this very special script. You have to read it. And of course, it was Will and Grace, and I 
recognized how special it was. And I met with Max and Dave and had a great meeting. And, but still my agents called and said, oh, well, and I said, they're amazing, but I'm just so tired. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that's my dog. Um, no worries. We've had a few dogs on these. <laughs> So, so what ended up happening that led to this idea of being able to have a voice was I sat down with Max and Dave bef before I was a I accepted the part and said, you know, they're like, what's your misgiving? What are your worries? And I was able to express to them my experience that I had had and that, you know, I wanted, I loved comedy and I knew I had something to contribute and I needed to have a voice. They, it, it, my voice didn't have to win out all the time, but it, it had to be considered. And um, they understood and they reassured me in that meeting. You know, everyone will have a voice and it's going to be a democracy. The best idea wins. It doesn't matter the hierarchy. And so it was because of that that I was able to go into Will and Grace and feel safe and to be able to start voicing my opinions. And very quickly, I, I saw everybody, you know, the whole cast, all of us were throwing out ideas. And um, that was just the way it was on Will and Grace. And it made all the difference. And, um, and so from that point on, uh, I had learned my lesson that you know, I, I, I have to feel like a collaborator in order for me to feel um, like I'm alive. Mm -hmm. You know, I told Max and Dave and I, you know, I said, look, I don't want to be just, you know, the straight woman. I don't want to be like the pretty girl and everyone's funny around me. I said, I won't be happy that way. And you won't, you your show will be hurt because I won't be happy. You know, if that's what you're looking for, I'm not the girl. And there are hundreds of actresses who would love to play that part. Um, and you should go to them, you know, but you need to know that for the sake of your show, you want, you know, four actors who are thrilled to be there and feel um, like they're, they're put into the right role. And so uh, it worked out. Yeah, no, it, it's, it's amazing. And it absolutely shows on the show and the way that you play it. And it's amazing openness to have from both sides at that point in your career as well. Um, I was also a little bit curious about the general landscape of comedy and how that's played into your work and your craft in, in comedy and as a performer, because, you know, I think, I think we've seen a, a shift in an involvement in the way that a character in a sitcom used to be one type and they were that type for the entire show. But particularly with this, you know, the evolution that Grace has had, you know, particularly in this season, you know, becoming a mother, there's a lot of different facets and a lot of different layers that you're able to bring to that. But then also on the political side where there's more of an appetite for, th for that within comedy as well. And I was interested in how that's impacted your work. Well, um, I think, I think you're absolutely right. I think that, especially in the world of, um, of sitcoms, uh, there is a, a set character and um, there's a, a music that is discovered and once it's discovered, then it's all about just playing the music of the character and how the characters play that music together. Um, I, think, I think we've come a long way in terms of um, being able to fill out characters and as you said, to become more political or to have you know, statements about what's happening in the world um, because of the single camera comedy. I think once, once single camera came into the lexicon, um, that, that made it much more of a hybrid of comedy and drama, and therefore there, there were just opportunities to really show depth to a character. Um, I think it, it still is hard to do that in a sitcom world. Uh, I, I think that we as a cast and as a show um, got away with much more growth 
and uh, and commentary because of the original DNA of the show. Because the show originally was meant to be, you know, provocative and uh, to push the boundaries and to challenge people, and it was it was meant to comment on pop culture and politics and everything that was happening today in real time. Um, that meant that when we came back this time around, um, we were already set up to be able to comment on the political landscape of where we are now and where pop culture is now. Um, in terms of the development of the characters, I think that that, that really came from the four of us. Um, you know, when we had the conversations about, you know, should we come back? Why are we coming back? Uh, it was very important to me that we had a reason to come back and that it was not mercenary. It wasn't just like, oh yeah, we'll just get a paycheck. You know, I was like, I, I the legacy means too much to me to, to sort of revive that world without a point of view. And, um, so the, so I, we got the reassurance from NBC that we would be able to still be provocative. Um, my concern at the time was that the president had worked for NBC mm -hmm. and had made money for ABC with The Apprentice. And I was concerned that there would be some sort of censorship about being able to speak freely about what was happening today in politics. And once we were reassured that we had complete freedom, I think that made us all feel comfortable. And then it was about, you know, what's important to you. And the only thing that I said to Max and Dave was that, it, as you had referenced before, is that it was really important to me that Grace was a feminist. Um, not just, you know, just ran not randomly, um, because I really believe that the grace we met would grow up to be a feminist. Um, you know, I, we, we saw her run for, you know, political office, uh, in her building, you know, the first way round and, you know, and she was fiery and feisty and, and I just felt like, you know, if we're going to meet her at, again and she's divorced and has no child and is middle-aged, um, I want her to be happy with that. I don't want her to still be the young Grace that we met who was like, I'm not going to be happy until I find my partner and we can get married and have a, a family. Um, and so it, it really meant the world to me that we were able to, there, there was one episode specifically, it was a baby shower episode, um, where the idea of choices as a woman was explored. And it was like, why can't we as women support each other for whatever choices we make? You know, and I said, as Grace, if Grace wanted to be a mother, she would have become a mother, she would have adopted. And she, she didn't. And that was by choice. And she's happy with the chosen family in her life. Um, and, and it meant the world to me that we had never seen that on primetime television before. Yeah, one of the episodes I wanted to ask you specifically about is the one that's airing this week, um, where there's an homage to I Love Lucy. I think it's it's one of my favorite ones to have watched this season. And, and I think the really unique thing is you're not just playing that character, you're actually all playing multiple characters in, in different scenes. And so that must have been a really unique challenge to you as an actor. And I was curious kind of what you did to really understand and kind of get into each of those those characters. Because every you know each of those actors on the original show had a different approach to comedy, the same way that you all do on Will & Grace. Oh, the, the I Love Lucy episode, it just is, um, I still can't believe that we were able to do it. Um, because it's the first time in history that Lucy Arnaz and her brother gave permission to anyone to replicate anything from that show. So we are the first ones. And so just the privilege of that alone is so meaningful. Um, the fact that we we did it shot for shot 
the exact script, nothing was changed in those iconic scenes. Um, it was an extraordinary challenge. I mean, I did Vitamin to Vegemin, which was a seven and a half minute long scene. And once we got into doing it, I realized we don't do that. We don't do seven and a half minute. Essentially, it was like an opus. It was like an aria. Um, it, it was unbelievable. And so it, the challenge was extraordinary. I only had a week to prepare it. Um, we didn't get the script until a week before. And so it, there really was a lot of just watching the scenes over and over and over and over and over and over again and then listening to it um, and not watching it and just listening for the music of each one of the characters, um, especially for Vitamita Vegemin because she progressively gets drunker. So, you know, it was a lot about just, you know, watching the choices she made as to when things would escalate and when her body would soften. And, um, but becoming Fred, that just blew my mind. You know, it took four and a half, five hours for, for them to make me Fred. And once I looked into the mirror, I, I could not believe it. Um, and, you know, that was the most intimidating. I was like, okay, yes, Lucy is hard because her voice is much higher than mine. And so trying to find that voice was hard. But Fred, I mean, Fred, his voice was really, was just really low. And um, I think we were, we were basically told by Max and Dave when it came to playing the other characters in that, in that initial scene that was done over and over again, um, to not sweat it as much about being exacting. Um, and the people watching will, will notice that Karen as, um, as Ethel is still Karen. Um, and that was by choice. Uh, so, you know, but to be able to see the, the, you know, the chocolate factory, you know, scene and the, the grape stamp stomping episode and to see singing and dancing, you know, it, the whole thing, it was, um, it was so joyful, but it was incredibly serious. Everybody on that set, um, cared so deeply about doing uh doing the best we could to show our reverence and respect for this iconic show and um so i mean that vitamin to vegemin bottle that was the exact bottle that lucille ball used in her show it had never been touched again after that show, it had put, been put away in storage, and Jim Landis, our prop master, was able to track it down and was able to get it for me. And um, as soon as I, I was told that, I started crying. Uh, but that was how far all of the departments went in, in being really um, exacting about it. And I, I think that all the departments deserve Emmys for it. I think the, the work is incredible. Yeah, that's so amazing to hear the amount of detail that went into it. And I think it's also such a testament to, you know, your work as an actor and particularly on the show and the way that you're still pushing yourself in, into new places. And so I wanted to ask about the ways in which you feel that playing this character over these seasons has developed your craft and how it's made you a better actor. Oh, um, well, definitely, definitely doing a four camera sitcom um, forces you to be brave. It forces you to trust yourself, trust your instincts, um, trust your character, uh, because at least on Will and Grace, um, they would rewrite the, 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 the script every night mm -hmm. for four days. And so essentially we wouldn't learn our script until the night before. And then we would come in and run it and then they would send out pages again. And so we would be sitting in the hair and makeup chair right before walking out for the audience, learning new lines. And um, at first it really um, paralyzed me with fear. I had this, this voice in my head that was saying, it has to be perfect. It has to be as good as if you had been studying these lines for two weeks. And of course, 
that was impossible and um, I suffered for it. And, and it was only because I had the luxury of, of years of doing it and slowly relaxing. Um, it, 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 there was never one show where I wasn't scared. There was never a show when I walked out there that I wasn't nervous about having the lines down. And because it was so funny, um, you know, the jokes were precious and we didn't want to ruin it. Um, but by the end, I was able to um, have a sense of humor about it. Very quickly, we all, you know, adopted this idea of we're going to swear. <laughs> As soon as we mess up, we are going to like scream like fuck and the whole audience would break out laughing. And that was our way of telling the audience, you know what, we're going to mess up and it's okay and you can laugh with us. Um, and so that, that just gave us the freedom to, to play more, um, which I think is the greatest gift coming out of doing the show is I think that I go into work now with a greater sense of play and uh, a, a greater belief in my in my instincts yeah and the show obviously has had such a monumental impact within the lgbtq community and i was interested in how being part of the show and, and playing this character and, and being part of that shift and that change and that conversation for all these years what the most important things are that you've learned about being an ally to the community through your work on the show Wow. Um, well, when we started the show, we had no idea that it would have any sort of social or political impact or import. Um, and I think it was, it was through receiving all of the letters back then that wrote letters, um, from people saying, uh, you know, I came out and my best friend won't speak to me anymore. And I, I, I wish I had a grace in my life right now, you know, or a letter saying, you know, um, I, I came out and my parents wouldn't stop crying. And we've been watching Will and Grace and slowly, week after week, um, we're starting to laugh at the same jokes and it's helping our family heal. You know, it was those kinds of letters that uh, really brought home the fact that there was a whole community of people who had never felt represented and how meaningful it was. Um, you know, it, it, it highlighted how much we take for granted that representation and it, um, it gave us a sense of purpose. Um, to make sure that we always kept in mind the representation. And, um, and, and there was a conversation with the community and the writers, you know, if, you know, the, the community would let us know if they were like, you know, we want to see more of this or we want to see more of that. And, uh, and I, I, I think more than anything, I, I, I think that's, my source of pride with this TV show, not the success of it, but um, the fact that it, it, it impacted people's lives for good and that it ultimately changed uh, our law in the country. Um, I think it taught me ultimately that every one of us has a platform. Um, some of us have a louder platform than others, but every one of us has a voice and um, how we choose to use it is meaningful. And by not using it is a statement. Um, and I think that's, that's what I, I come away with. Yeah. And as you look back at your time playing this character and, you know, living with Grace for all this time, what are you going to miss most about playing her and, and being with her? Oh, gosh. Uh, laughing every single day. Um, there, it, it really, uh, I mean, you know, when we came back after the election, everyone was in such a deep depression and was scared. And, um, and all of a sudden, we realized that 
you know, in the midst of doing what we were trying to do, you know, we were laughing belly laughs every single day. And that is something that um, I, I, I will miss desperately because it's, it's so beautiful to laugh with people and, um, and to share joy with people in, in the creative process. Uh, and it's, there's, I think there's nothing more healing than laughter. Yeah, it's been such a such a joy to watch the show in, in both iterations and to be watching this final season. And, you know, kind of like you said, it just it goes so far beyond just being comedy. There's so much more to it. So, you know, thank you for for the show. And thank you for taking the time to, to sit and share all of this with us today. Really appreciate it. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you. And stay safe.